Y'all. This was a weird one. Hey guys, my name's Bethany and welcome to the second video in the Disney Revisited series. Just in case you didn't watch the first one over Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, though you totally should have, link up there and in the description. The plan is to eventually watch every Disney movie ever made, including the live action ones, and make a video about that movie each week. We will go over the plot, how the movie differs from the original tale, if that applies, and then some fun facts at the end. This week is Pinocchio, and it was actually quite a bit darker and a whole lot weirder than I remembered as a child. You only really remember the dancing, singing cricket, the fairy godmother, and the happy puppet, but we really are going to dive into some kidnapping, drugs, alcohol, bullies, being eaten by a whale, a whole lot. Pinocchio was released on February 7th, 1940. This was Walt Disney's second feature length animated film right behind Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And as we talked about in the Snow White video, a lot of people didn't think that this type of movie would be one that the public would really want to go see since an animated film was new territory for such a long runtime. Surprise, surprise though, Snow White made $1.5 million, which was an astounding amount of money for the 30s. Though it gained a lot of critical fame and was called a masterpiece by the critics, with the public, it took a while for them to really start appreciating the movie. It took many years and many re-releases of the movie for it actually to even break even on its budget. The movie starts with introducing our narrator, Jiminy Cricket, who is giving us a lesson in dreams and wishes. This is the scene that's inspired children to wish on stars ever since then. Then he explains how he came to the house of Geppetto, who is a woodcarver and has two pets, Figaro the cat and Cleo the fish. Geppetto loves the puppet and it reminds him of an actual child, so he wishes upon the evening star that Pinocchio would be made into a real boy. The blue fairy comes and mostly grants the wish. The puppet is now animated, but he's still wooden and not a real life boy yet. Jiminy is appointed as his conscience and tells Pinocchio that if he's ever in trouble, all he really needs to do is whistle and Jiminy will come. Pinocchio is sent to school the next morning, but Jiminy is still asleep so he gets left behind. Pinocchio has good intentions, but he's still distracted by a fox named John Worthington Foulfellow, whose nickname is Honest John. Sounds convincing. Honest John has an accomplice named Gideon the Cat. Honest John and Gideon trick Pinocchio and sell him to the marionette master. The marionette master has a traveling show in town and they tell Pinocchio that he could become an actor. Jiminy finally shows up and tries to stop the sale, but he's too late. Pinocchio has become successful in the show and he dances along with all the other puppets. Feeling like he's failed his job, Jiminy gives up and leaves Pinocchio behind. Pinocchio wants to go home, but whenever he tries to go back to Geppetto, the master feels like he's going to lose his star and locks Pinocchio in a birdcage. Finally remembering his instructions, Pinocchio whistles for Gemini, who tries to open up the cage but isn't strong enough. The Blue Fairy shows up to save the day again, but Pinocchio is really ashamed of everything he's done. He tells a lot of lies, and we all know what happens whenever Pinocchio lies, his nose grows. The fairy forgives him and shrinks his nose, but tells him if he continues to be naughty or tell lies, he'll never be a real boy. Pinocchio and Jiminy head on home, but are separated again. Nothing goes right for these two, and of course, Honest John and Gideon show up to steal Pinocchio away again and give him to a coachmaster this time. The coachman takes Pinocchio to Pleasure Island, which is an amusement park, and their young boys are allowed to do all the things they want to do, like drink alcohol and smoke cigars. But because they're generally acting like jackasses, the island turns them into real jackasses or donkeys, and those donkeys are then sold to circuses and mines. Before the transformation is complete, Pinocchio thankfully escapes and returns home. When Pinocchio gets home, he realizes that Geppetto has been out looking for him and even went to the sea to look for Pinocchio, but while he was looking, Geppetto got swallowed by a whale. Pinocchio goes to find Geppetto, and they escape by setting a fire in the belly of the whale. The whale sneezes them out and gets revenge by wrecking their raft, and on the way back to shore, 
Pinocchio sacrifices himself to save Geppetto from drowning. Pinocchio's sacrifice has proved enough that he is worthy and he is turned into a real boy. There's a good ending for Jiminy Cricket as well, who gets a gold badge for being a good conscience, which I think is arguable, but okay. <laughs> Now jumping on into the differences, a major difference of how we're going to do it this week is that Snow White was based off of a fairy tale, which is traditionally quite a bit shorter, but Pinocchio was based off of an actual novel, so it's a bit more material and is of course going to be quite a bit different from the novel as they can't include everything. Carlo Collati wrote the novel in 1881. It was released as parts of an Italian magazine and then was finally compiled into a full book two years later. And like I said, the book itself does have 36 chapters, so quite a bit more material and quite a few more differences, but I was able to narrow down just a few larger ones that really do make a difference. The first one is in how the book originally approaches Jiminy. In the original story, Pinocchio actually kills Jiminy with a hammer, and then Jiminy comes back as a actual ghost, more of a true conscience, that other people can't see. Walt instead decided to keep him alive and came up with the name Jiminy. He made him wear clothes, walk, and talk just like a human. The Blue Fairy also had a team of animals working with her in the book, which included a poodle who was her coachman, a group of mice to pull her coach, and a snail who was her messenger. Some of the names were changed when going to the theatrical release. Pleasure Island was called Toyland, and another big change is that instead of a whale swallowing Pinocchio and Geppetto, it was a giant shark. People know the opening song When You Wish Upon a Star has played before the majority of Walt Disney movies and home video releases. The name Pinocchio literally means little wooden head. It took 12 artists and 18 months to come up with a Pinocchio that was round enough and didn't look as scary to children. They came up with the idea of drawing him as a human boy and then after adding in the puppet nails and joints. According to a 1938 New York Times article, Walt set back production by at least five months. He scrapped 2,300 feet of footage because it lacked the feeling he had in mind for the original tale. Though there were over two million drawings when making the film, only about 300,000 got used. Apparently the hardest part of production was making Pinocchio a sympathetic character. In the original tale, they felt that Pinocchio had a malicious and mischievous streak and they tried to make him more passive so that the audience would like him. When the actor Christian Reb was cast to play Geppetto, they had no idea what they wanted the character to look like, though they finally decided to base the drawing off of the actor himself. In a similar process as they did in Snow White with the actress Adriana Castellati, they based the movements and features of the Blue Fairy on a famous Broadway star at the time. They had her act out the movements of the fairy and then drew as based on her movements. Gideon the Cat was originally supposed to be a speaking role and was voiced by Mel Blanc, who was famously the voice for a lot of the Looney Tunes characters, including Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck. They decided to make the role silent, but kept in three hiccups. Blanc also voiced Geppetto's cat, also using his sneezes. Monster of the Whale was voiced by Thurl Ravenscroft, which was the future voice of Tony the Tiger. He would land many singing and speaking roles in Disney movies over the next half a century. He gave speaking roles in Dumbo and The Little Toaster, and you can still hear his voice on Disney rides, which include The Haunted Mansion, Country Bear Jamboree, and The Pirates of the Caribbean. When future producers were working on the film The Little Mermaid, they used the whale scenes as reference. The crew came up with a new technology for filming in this movie. They created a new universal crane. With Snow White, they could only control the scene from above the filming setup, whereas with this one, they can control from any angle. As we talked about in the beginning, the movie didn't do so well on its initial run. Its budget was $2.3 which was twice the amount that Snow White was but it only earned back about two million on its initial run. Some theorized the movie did so poorly initially because it was so grim. 
Pinocchio is tormented throughout the entire movie and four out of the five people who were tormenting him get off with no punishment. The film eventually made a profit in 1945 when it was re-released in theaters. The film would be put back into theaters a total of seven times up until 1992. The nephew of the author wanted to sue Disney for over-Americanizing the film. He argued that Pinocchio's adventures were an Italian work and should not be distorted to make it American. There's no evidence that any action was taken because of the complaint, though. Even though it took the public a while to come around to the film, the critics loved it and it actually won two Oscars. It got the Oscar for Best Original Score and Best Original Song for When You Wish Upon a Star. This was the first time an animated film had won competitive Oscars. The dual win wouldn't happen again in the studio until Mary Poppins' release in 1965. Walt Disney's favorite character in the film was Figaro the cat, and he pushed for the cat to be featured in as much of the movie as possible. Once production was over, he decided to make Figaro the companion of Minnie Mouse, replacing her Cocker Spaniel. I wanted to keep these mostly free of my opinion, as that's not really the point of why we're here. But I thought maybe it would be cool at the end to rank each movie in the order of which ones I like the best. So the ranking for this week, I think I'm going to have to say that Snow White's definitely above Pinocchio in my book. It's a strikingly beautiful film, especially for the time, and it has an interesting story, but it's just not quite on par with the Disney princesses. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video, please hit the like button to help support the channel, and hopefully more people can find these videos. Subscribe for more Disney content, and there's a whole lot more on this channel, so please go check that out. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!